So today I'm going to be building a React TypeScript tic-tac-toe app in one cut uh, using this create React app TypeScript uh, repo as a starting point. Uh, so far I've just ran these three commands and now we have uh, a really basic code base set up, kind of ready for us to play with. Uh, the goal of this video, uh, the explanations are going to be pretty light. Uh, more, more so, the goal of this video is to kind of have a feel of what a TypeScript React application can look like. And I'm going to be using TypeScript 3 uh, while doing this, which isn't really fully publicly available uh, for Visual Studio Code. Uh, I have it using Visual Studio Code Insiders. Um, and from just kind of prepping for, for this video, uh, there was a f th this repo in particular has a lot of li linters that are very strict. Um, and they complain about a lot of stuff. So we'll kind of figure that out together, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's just, let's do it. We have 30 minutes. The time is 127 my clock. Um, yeah. So first things first, let's go right now. We're in the app.tsx. Um, let's do render cell as a function. And it has to be public. Again, that's one of those things that TypeScript 3 complains about. And then return a div. And then class name should be equal to cell. And uh, we're going to have nine cells because it's a tic tac toe board. So let's say it takes a number. And down here, uh, let's first of all just tic tac toe using React TypeScript by me put in the title whoops so uh, we are here rendering a cell with a class name we need to render nine of them um, let's create a second thing for that public render board uh, the board doesn't really need any inputs and return so we want to return nine cells how should we do that? Uh, we might want to store the cells in the state. Mm, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a state. So let's say we have state is equal to, and then we're gonna have a board, and the board will have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cells, and we probably want to make that an enum, const enum player um, none, copy uppercase zero, should be an equals, player one will be one, and then player two will equal to two. What's the complaint? Is declared but never used? Of course, we want to make a state for this player, so we're going to be using these numbers, these enumerated constants instead of these numbers here. Um, so we want an interface state. It's going to have a board. And the board is a list of players. Interface state is never used because we need to pass it to here, to the actual component. Uh, the first thing is prop. The second thing is a state. And uh, should we do public? Yeah, state should be public. And these, instead of zeros, should be player.none. So the idea is, when the board starts, no player has moved on any of the squares. That's kind of what we're initializing with. Let's add a comma, and then paste it in nine times. You could probably loop through it, but I'm trying to do a speed one here. So one, two, oh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom, we have an initialized board. And then here, um, Cons board should equal to this state. We're going to read the board from the state, and board dot. What, what do we want to do? We want to return a cell for every cell in the board. So we can actually do board dot map for each cell. We're going to return this dot render cell, and we're going to pass in C. However, that's the value. We want the index, so it's actually, I think, the value key. There we go. Mapping to the value key. 
and the key is the index, so we want to be passing in the index to render cell. Why? Well, can I find the index? Right, because it's the key. And that's the index, and then here we go. Cool, then down here. Um, well, the board is also going to need a container actually, so good class name board container. Uh, should not close itself. There we go. Slash there. And then here we're going to do this dot render board. Call that function. That's going to render the board. The board is going to render nine cells. And let's just make sure this part's working so far by giving the cell and the board some styles. So we have the board container, we've got dot cell, let's say the width is going to be 75 pixels, oh, let's make it easy, 50 pixels, uh, the height will be 50 pixels, display, inline block, font size 0 so they don't overlap, Actually, although I think the font size 0 might apply to the board container, but eh, whatever. Um, and in each of the, if each cell is 50 pixels, that means the board should be 150 pixels. Um, height to be 150 pixels. Uh, but if, let's give them each a color. Let's say the default color will be blue, because why not? We can. And let's give them a border radius, uh, not a border radius, a border, so that we can actually kind of see the difference uh, between each cell. One pixel solid black. Now the thing is when we add this border, the border gets uh, added to this width. So it's actually going to be now 52 pixels because of like a border on the left and a border on the right. So we want to do box sizing border box. So that way the width of 50 pixels now includes the width of the border. And let's center this and give it some padding at the top. 75 pixels. And let's see if our application kind of renders. Well, nice, there it is. We've got our basic tic tac toe field. Um, the blue is kind of painful. I'm going to, just for myself, kind of lighten it up to a nice random color. And because I'm a little OCD about this, you'll notice that the border on the outside is thinner than the border on the inside. So I'm going to give this board container a border. And do this all black. And now this should be symmetrical. Boom. Great. So now we have our basic tic tac toe field kind of rendered. Um, we're going to want uh, these to be clickable hover styles. Let's just do that right away. Dot cell hover. Cursor pointer, color background, yellow. Give it a background color. Not, I don't actually want it to be yellow, but ah, get back here. Where are the hover styles? Oh well, the hover is now yellow. We have a hover. Great. Um. What do we want to do next? We want to make it so every time a player clicks on a cell, they own that cell. And that means we're going to update the board there. So we want to unclick, and then we're going to pass in a function this dot handle uh, cell click. And then we're going to create public handle cell click. It'll be a function. And it's actually going to need an index to know uh, which, which board to update, which index of this board. So we're going to have to call it with some index, this index. Uh, but now we're actually just calling the function. We'd have to make it an anonymous function. So that it actually has a pointer that like when this is clicked, it executes this. But this is where I, I do recall that 
Uh, TypeScript complains, the TSLint specifically complains about lambdas are forb forbidden, uh, which is this. Uh, we're not allowed to do these anonymous functions, so we actually have to kind of change this guy up here um, to take an index and then return a function. So notice it, it's a function that takes an index and then it returns a new function that when called will do something. And that allows us here to just call it. However, this is not actually the handler, it actually is create on click handler is what it does. Because when you execute this function, it creates a handler and then returns the handler. Just kind of being pedantic. And so we're gonna to need to read in the board from the state. And let's create a new board uh, because we want some immutability to happen. So we just do board.slice. And we want to make it so that new board at the location of index should equal to player. However, what's player? We don't have a player. Uh, we need to make a new variable in the state that keeps track of which player is going to be the one moving. Um, so player to move. Player to move. Next move. Uh, what should I call this? Next player turn. And we need to give it a type. Let's actually create. Oh wait, we have a type player. Oh, but this is supposed to be a value. Uh, player dot one. So this. And then there's a comma here that's missing. Great. So we have the next player turn. So let's read that in, and let's assign it here. Next player turn will be assigned here. And when we're done, we want to set the state. Um, with the new board and we want to change whose uh, turn it is so the next player turn will be three minus the current next player turn right what am i doing wrong here is a number Next for a turn, player dot one. Hmm. Object literal may only specify known properties. Why is that not a known property? So here, next. It's saying it does, oh, it, it's saying it doesn't exist here. I never uh, defined next player turn in the uh, interface, and it's a type player. There we go. Cool. And so three minus next player works because three minus the two player is one. Three minus one is two. So this will constantly, every time a player makes a move, make that move. And let's make sure we can actually see this happening by changing the color of a cell based on which player has moved there. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to read in which player owns the cell from the render cell area, const board, state. And let's say data dash player should equal to board at index. So now we're gonna have a player attribute for every cell and let's give those a style. Dot cell player dash Data dash player should equal to. Uh, I think it's double quotes. If it's one, uh, we're gonna want to do background purple. We haven't used purple yet. And then if player background, if the player is two, we'll make the purple background. Uh, what's another color I haven't used? Brown. Okay, that kind of looks red, but let's see if that works. Okay, the colors are really similar, but it's working. You can see that we are able to unclick have two different colors appear. Um, instead of brown, I'm going to do red, more drastically different at least. There we go. Oh, I have a green for the first player, just to make it really pop out, stand out. Cool, great. So there we go. Um, 
what's next? Uh, players can now make those moves. Um, we want to be able to tell when someone wins. Oh, and we want to not allow a player to move on a square that's already been moved. So let's disable that first. Uh, when you click on a square, we're going to say if the board at the position of the index is equal to is not equal to player dot none. So if it's not an empty square, we are going to just return and do nothing because we don't want to overwrite, allow players to overwrite other players' moves. So now when I spam individual squares, they're now disabled, and you can't overwrite them. Cool. So next we want to uh, track who wins. And I guess before we track who wins and announce that, let's actually assign, uh, just make it clear up here which player is which. Uh, render status, right, should be a public method. And uh, you're going to return a div with player one, two strings. Player one, I guess it needs to be like this. Player one is green. Great. Player two is red. And the game status will be game is ongoing to start. And then later we'll update this with when the game actually ends. And let's render this below the board. This dot render status. And let's give it a bit of a margin just so it's not so up close. Margin top, 75 pixels. This text should go down. There we go. Player one is green, player two is red, game is ongoing. And then the goal is when we find out that someone's won, we're going to change this text from ongoing to win or lose. Um, all right. Check uh, public. Check if game is over. And we're going to call this probably. Uh, where is it? Where's that move? Yeah. So every time someone makes a move, we're going to call a function that checks if the game is over. And um, let's see. We're going to need to track if the game is over inside the state. Uh, winning player. Should be a type of player. Um, oh, should start off as negative one. Oh, one sec. Hmm. So you can have player 2 win, you can have player 1 win, you can have a draw which is 0, but you also need a sign that the game is ongoing. Um, so const ongoing game should be equal to negative 1, type ongoing game, whoops, should be equal to negative 1. And we want to initialize the winning player or game status um, not really sure what to call this uh, I want to assign who has won to this value but it also will represent that the game is ongoing uh, game is won yeah sure why not and it's going to first be negative 1. And it's probably going to complain because we have not added the game is 1 property to the interface of the state, which can be either a player or it can be on a constant of ongoing game. And it's not sorted alphabetically. This is one of those things about this linter that wants everything to be alphabetical. There's no comma. 
Cool. So, here we go. Check if the game is over. It's going to take a board. And the board is going to be of a list of players. And it's going to do a bunch of checks. Um, and we're going to really, we're going to check here. Uh, const game is 1 should equal to check if the game is over and we're going to pass in the new board that we just kind of assigned up here and when we set state we're going to set the state of game is 1 and it's probably complaining because this function isn't implementing yet so we don't have to worry about that complaint once we implement this like if I just return negative 1 there yeah it's happy so how do we know if a game is one? If board at zero is equal to board, like what I'm going to be checking here is the horizontal uh, winning sequences first. Um, okay, I was going to show you, but guess it can't. So horizontal sequence, vertical sequence, and then diagonal sequences is equal to board at one, and board at one is equal to board at two, and board at two should not equal to uh, player dot nine. We also want to make sure that like, so the three values match, which means someone got three in a row and the three in a row are not no player. And then if that's the case, we're going to return the value of the winner, which will be any one of these cells. And then we're going to take that, copy it, and then we're going to check the second row. So board at 0, 1, 2, 3. Whoops. Board at 3 is equal to, whoops. 4. Board at 4. The middle square is equal to 5. And then 5 is not equal to null. We're going to return board at 3. Next row is what? Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Starting at 6, moving on up. 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, and then 8. So that's the first three um, winning situations. Now we can do the vertical ones. So we go back to 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, compare top left with middle left. And then we've got three, four, five, six. And then six is not equal to no. Return zero. Cool. And we just keep doing this. Uh, one, one, four, four, seven. And then 7 is not an empty. Yeah, this is the, uh, the duller part. 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and then this time it's just up at 1 as well. 8, and then 8 is not Okay, great. So we've done vertical wins, horizontal wins, and now diagonal wins, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Eight. Four does not equal to eight. So this is top left to bottom right. Oh, zero. I've got to update that. Return values to one. And now top right to bottom left is zero, one, two, three, four, four, five, six. And six is not the blank. Return two. Cool. So this should be three horizontal, three vertical, and then two diagonal wins. Um, it returns this. And let's display that somehow so we know if it's right or not before moving forward. Uh, we state the state of game as one, and then we're going to read the state of game as one when we render the status. So get state game is one to be equal to from the state and if uh, 
I should have this. Const the winner should equal to winning text. And then if game is one is not equal to player dot none, then we're gonna return that player uh, of game is one one. And what if the game is ongoing? Here we're going to say that if game is one does not equal, if game is one is equal to uh, game underscore ongoing, isn't that what it called it? Ongoing game, whoops. So if the game is one, is still equal to the, the status of who won the game is equal to ongoing game then we show game is ongoing otherwise we show the winning text because someone has to have won why is there an error oh because there's no colon here if the winning text is not equal to none. Oh, this is wrong. If this because player dot none means that the game is a draw. That's kind of like the logic we're going for. If it's the value of a player, it's a winner. If it's this, it's a draw. So that means the winning text, if it is equal to player dot none, is a draw. So uh, the game is a draw. Let's see if this works. Player two one, and we can still play, and then other people win. Okay, so that's that's something we're going to disable. But um, let's see if player one can win. Player one can win. Okay, let's see if we can have a draw. Do it, do it. Okay, the drawing sequence. Oops, drawing sequence middle top right. Boop, 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 boop. Game is ongoing. Okay, so we're not we're we're never actually setting the uh, right. We never make a check for if the game is a draw. So we have to do two things: check if the game is a draw, so that we check the status, and if also if the game is over, we shouldn't be able to continue clicking in unoccupied squares. Um, let's do that unoccupied squares part first, uh, which means in the render. So actually, we could just do create in the unclick handler if. Right now, we say if there's already a player, which game is one, and if game is one does not equal to ongoing actually game, we want to do nothing. Anytime someone clicks on a cell inside the create on click handler, if the game has already been won. We want to do nothing. And now it's complaining that I defined it twice. So, uh, new game is one. Let's rename this one. And then we have to pass it in here accordingly. All right, let's see if that works. And then if I click, okay, it's still letting me click on things. So if game is one is not equal to ongoing game, we and board, oh and the board at some index is not equal to empty. I think there should be an or. If the game is one, we definitely don't want to play. Or if the board has already been clicked on, this cell, then we also don't want to keep playing. There we go. So now the game gets disabled, essentially, once there is a winner. And the other thing we need to do is decide on a draw. Okay, it's a winner, but... There. Game is still ongoing. We never check for a draw. And one good way of checking for a draw is when we check if the game is over, we will need to check if 
there are any moves left available. And to do that, we're going to have to go through the board uh, for sell a fridge player in the board. We're going to be doing something. We're going to be checking that if the player does not equal to uh, ongoing underscore game. Wait, player dot none. If there's a if there's a single cell that is still unoccupied, the game is still ongoing. Return ongoing game. Okay. Well. Um. So if the player does not equal to, if there's a cell without a player assigned to it, the game is still ongoing. If however there is no winner and there are no cells to move on, that means the game is a draw and that we return as a neutral. Now like an empty, the same value we have for an empty square uh, is how we're going to signify that. Oh. The game is it okay? Well, that's that's wrong. Um, if the player is not equal to player that none, oh, and now it's saying if there's a single cell that's not null, the game is ongoing. We want to say if if we find any cell that is none then the game is ongoing. Oh yeah. What? Okay, what's a player? It's a tech player, okay. If this player is none, we return ongoing game. Oh wait, isn't this supposed to be the draw? Then why did I change this to none? Wait, no, this is a draw. If we find a single cell that is not occupied for Oh, for each, um, the return of a for each applies to actually like returning values into the board. It's not actually returning values for the function. Um, so what we want to do is board, let i, q, i, plus then board dot length, plus i, So here, we're going to do this check, right? So the for each over right overpowers the uh, the return. Meanwhile, this return of a four would actually go to the uh, return for the function. The linter is complaining because apparently for loops suck. All right, well, four const player in board if player is equal to player dot none we're gonna return ongoing game the types of string and player have no overlap who is a string None is zero. What's player? What are you, player? You're a string. Why is player a string? Yeah. 
What makes players strong? Hmm. That was good for him. Non symbol innumerable properties of an object. For of? Is that what I should be using? For an array like. Closes the iterator, returns the return. Okay, so for in actually iterates over the property names, which are strings. For of iterates over the property values. Cool. Refresh. All right, game is ongoing. I hope so. Game is a draw. We did it. Is that it? Do we have winners? Chicken dinners? Game is a draw. There you go. Player one wins. Not really sure how long that took. Didn't really time it. I think it was about half an hour. Just maybe a minute or two over. Um, yeah. So we have a really basic single pager with just like a really light amount of styles um, for this game of tic-tac-toe. Whew, that was intense. Um, and yeah, the typing wasn't too bad. We just have a few types, a uh, few numerables, one innumerable. Uh, the interface, the linter complained a little bit. That's fine. Hmm, all right. That's Tic Tac Toe TypeScript, uh, React. Uh, next might be Connect 4. I don't know. We'll see. See you guys next time. Bye. This lighting is so good. It's like I have a whole professional camera set up, except I don't. That's sunlight. Mother Nature. Mmm.